last time you told me about what was it you had how did you call that a hellish night yeah did you have like three nightmares in a row i think so so i thought we could maybe put a plan in action and just do like an entire nightmare um, routine bedtime routine would you like that? because <laughs> I already got you a comforting I know it's very cold these days. Um, do you feel warm enough? Is the blanket warm or do you need more? It's good. Okay, so let me just adjust it because to tuck you in gently. this giant puff <laughs> and I'm going to ask you to describe what dream you would like to have tonight okay and we're going to go into details alright so sleep throughout and you will just close your eyes anyway okay so let's start with this one okay I'm going to ask you questions and I want you answer them in your head okay you don't need to speak okay so first relax okay you need to completely relax and you can take 
Beauty and the Beast and other classic tales. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a very far off country, there lived a merchant who had been so fortunate in all his undertakings that he was enormously rich. As he had, however, six sons and six daughters, he found that his money was not too much to let them all have everything they fancied, and they were accustomed to do so. Um, to do. <laughs> but by one day, a most unexpected misfortune befell them. Their house caught fire and was speedily burned to the ground with all the splendid furniture, the books, pictures, gold, silver, and precious goods it contained. And this was only the beginning of their troubles. Their father, who had until this moment prospered in all ways, suddenly lost every ship he had upon the sea, either by dint of pirates, shipwreck, or fire. Then he heard that his clerks in distant countries, whom he trusted entirely, had proven unfaithful, and at last, from great wealth, he fell into the direst poverty. All that he had left was a little house in a desolate place, at least a hundred leagues from the town in which he had lived, and to this he was forced to retreat with his children, who were in despair at the idea leading such a different life. Indeed, the daughters at first hoped that their friends, who had been so numerous while they were rich, would insist on their staying in their houses now they no longer possessed one, but they soon found that they were left alone, and that their former friends even attributed their misfortunes to their own extravagance, and showed no intention of offering them any help. So nothing was left for them but to take their departure to the cottage, which stood in the midst of a dark forest, and seemed to be the most dismal place upon the face of the earth. As they were too poor to have any servants, the girls had to work hard like peasants, and the sons, for their part, cultivated the field to earn their living. Roughly clothed and living in the simplest way, the girls regretted unceasingly the luxuries and amusements of their former lives. Only the youngest tried to be brave and cheerful. She had been as sad as anyone when misfortune overtook her father, but soon recovering her natural gaiety, she set to work to make the best of things, to amuse her father and brothers as well as she could, and to try to persuade her sisters to join her in dancing and singing. But they would do nothing of the sort, and, because she was not as joyful as themselves, they declared that this miserable life was all she was fit for. But she was really far prettier and cleverer than they were. Indeed, she was so lovely that she was always called Beauty. After two years, when they were all beginning to get used to their new life, something happened to disturb their tranquility. Their father received the news that one of his ships, one of his ships, which he had believed to, do, to be lost, had come safely into port with a rich cargo. 
while the sons and daughters at once thought their poverty was at an end, and wanted to set out directly for the town. But their father, who was more prudent, begged them to wait a little, and though it was harvest time, and he could ill be spared, determined to go himself first to make inquiries. Only the youngest daughter had any doubt, but that they would soon again be rich as they were as they were before, or at least rich enough to live comfortably in some town where they would where they would find amusement and gay companions once more. So they all loaded their father with commissions for jewels and dresses, which it would have taken a fortune to buy. Only beauty, feeling sure that it was of no use, did not ask for anything. Her father, noticing her silence, said, And what shall I bring for you, beauty? This reminds me a little bit of Cinderella, no? The only thing I wish for is to see you come home safely, she answered, but this one vexed her sisters who fancied that she was blaming them for having asked such a costly thing. Her father, however, was pleased, but as he thought that at her age she certainly ought to like pretty presents, he thought her to choose something. Well, dear father, she said, as you insist upon it, I beg that you will bring me a rose. I have not seen one since we came here, and I love them so much. So the merchant set out and reached the town as quickly as possible. But only to find that his former companions, believing him to be dead, had divided between them the goods which just a sheep had brought. And after six months of trouble and expense, he found himself as poor as when he started, having been able to recover only just enough to pay the cost of his journey. To make matters worse, he was obliged to leave the town in the most terrible weather. So by the time he was within a few leagues of his own, was 